then you can see that TypeScript was just added. We'll go into Barrels MD and boo. What just happened? That wasn't supposed to happen. Why is it? Why is it like this? Wait. Oh, I didn't save. I didn't save the file. No one saw anything. No one saw a damn thing. You hear me? What if I told you that there's a way as we developers could literally remember everything and anything that we learn? Ah, you're just kidding. It's kind of a bunch of but any there is a good method that i found that helps me learn pretty much anything that i come across in my journey and it also helps me retain that knowledge all you're gonna need is some sort of text editor preferably one that supports markdown and git but that is also optional recently in like the last couple weeks i had a one-on-one -on -one with my manager where we were kind of talking about ways to grow as a developer not only in my role here now at airbyte as a developer advocate but also just as a developer advocate slash developer in general you're always looking for ways to kind of improve and level up in your career and there's got to be different ways to do that being self-taught there's a lot of gaps that i fall into and things that i just didn't know or don't know currently that i should or feel like i should have known so i've been on like the search to kind of fill those gaps and really figure out how to do that so in our 101s he did show me a github repo from someone that he has followed as well and he has essentially a github repo of literally everything that he's learned and he's turned those into small quote-unquote blog posts although they're not they're not really blog posts and i found this to be a really fascinating way to take notes and it's almost like a library of knowledge that you create for yourself that you can always refer back to but it also forces you to really learn things i'll link it down in the description but that is essentially where i got my inspiration for this from anyways let me just show you what this note taking method is how it works and how i use it to pretty much learn everything all right so let me put us in a example scenario let's just say we're learning typescript and specifically we're learning about barrels in typescript we want to know what it is how it works what the code for that looks like and then take some notes on it what i would do is i would literally open up a web browser i would type in barrels typescript and then find a couple resources. This is the first blog post that I found. The one key thing here in terms of the research is finding what resources work for you. Not all the time are articles or blogs going to work for you. Maybe you learn better through videos. And so if that's the case, then I would go back here and I would look through the video sections on Google and see, look, we found a JavaScript barrel files explained. It's not necessarily TypeScript, but it's the same concept. You can also go to this one if you want. But there are a plethora of resources out there that teach these concepts that you want to learn. And so you just kind of have to sift through and take some time to really figure out what resources work and learn what it is that you want to take notes on. This method really, really does force you to do the research. A lot of the times, maybe we don't do the research as in depth as we want to, but when we want to write a quote unquote blog post for it, we want to sound like and actually know what it is we're talking about. And so this method really does force you to do that. But that blog post is helpful for me. I think this GitHub repo was also helpful for me. So I'm actually going to go back and, and open both of those up. And once I have these open, I'm going to take the time to learn about barrel imports in TypeScript or well, barrel imports slash exports in TypeScript. This also goes for JavaScript. But anyways, let's just say I have an understanding of this. I've already taken the time to learn about barrel imports slash exports or just barrels in general in TypeScript. I would go into my code editor or my text editor of choice, whatever it is that you personally chose. As I mentioned, it's preferable if you had a editor that supports both Markdown and Git. That way you can have a nice workflow where you have a place to save these files in a remote location. But also if in the future you want to turn and make these public, let's just say on your personal site as blog posts or anywhere else like Hashnode or Dev.2, you could then just copy and paste these over into those editors and then have a seamless integration. There's tools like Obsidian and Notion. Both are very, very good for drafting these kinds of posts up. They also support Markdown as well. So if it doesn't necessarily support Git, then you can just copy and paste them over to VS Code if you want to do that for your workflow and then just do the whole thing of pushing it up to a repo. But we'll get into those steps later. Let's focus on this right now. So as you can see, I have VS Code open. I'm in my repo. I've named it what I learned. Kind of a play on TIL, which is today I learned, which is also the name of the repo that I got inspired by 
So I just wanted something of my own and of the same type. So I named it what I learned, but name it whatever you want. Inside of the repo that you create, you're going to create different folders. And those folders are going to be named over the general topics that you're learning. And so you can see that I have a JavaScript folder and obviously anything inside of this folder are going to be files directly related to JavaScript. So everything JavaScript related is going to live in this folder. I have another folder called VN learning about virtual environments. This should be named python but i named it vm for some reason and now we're going to create a new folder called typescript and so obviously anything inside of this folder is going to be typescript specific and we're going to go in and create a new folder and we're going to call this barrels.md and inside of this we're going to start our note taking based off of what we've learned and so we're going to start with a heading and this is going to be called barrels. So this is the topic of this file. And then we're going to go down and then pretty much go back and forth between these resources and really just learn about what barrels are, right? I need to know what it's about, how it's used. And that's the beauty and why I suggested Markdown, which is Markdown allows you to have code examples like this. And so not only are you note taking on the actual concept slash theory of whatever you're learning, but you also get to actually start a code block and then write the code out line by line. You're obviously not having practical experience with it, but then you actually, once you type things out, then you have a much better understanding and you're more susceptible to learning and retaining that knowledge. If you're actually typing out the code and being forced to know what it's doing, obviously it's not going through an actual compiler or anything, but this is probably the best thing you can do. We're going to right now just kind of go through both of these resources and explain what barrels are. So barrels uh, in TypeScript, short post about we create a useful strategy. So here's a barrels, a way to put together all the same type or same usage files in the same place. I think the book had a better under like explanation of what barrels are. A barrel is a way to roll up exports from several modules into a single convenient module, the barrel itself is a module file that re-exports the selected exports of other modules. Oh, I see. So yeah, because I've used a barrel before, but I like I there was no way I could explain it. But so like this definition of what a barrel is or whatever it is, and then put it into your own words into where it makes sense for you, right? Because sometimes these explanations don't really make sense. If they don't click initially, you're going to want to dumb it down a little bit. This is just a reviews thing that I have, which is really nice. So that's the example that we have. And then I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense by me explaining it that way. But uh, we can actually consolidate this, this into a one liner import by using barrels. This is why going back and forth between different resources might help because like literally they'll have a better explanation somewhere else. I think about something else. Add an index to the interfaces folder, import all the interfaces and export them in the same file. So in the pages folder, I have all this. So I didn't even import it. So I just export all of this. Okay, so that makes more sense. Index.ts file within the pages directory like so. I think I did it for navigation. So then that means for Toodaloo, I'm going to have to go back into add.tsx and then do the same thing for this because I'm still I'm still doing all the imports like so. So now we have a full blog post drafted. You can see that I have explanations here and there, but the big key thing, as I mentioned before, is that we're able to have code examples spread throughout. And that actually helps me and could potentially help you understand more about how whatever it is that you're learning work. The prime thing is typing out the code. It really does help me retain the knowledge for this example, what barrels are. And now I can go into whatever TypeScript project I may have and by default be able to spin up a barrel and, and have it working. Even though it's not too hard, it still helps me remember. But anyway, let's move into the next part which is sending this off to my github repo and if you haven't done this already i would you know this is completely up to you but you can spin up a github repo name it whatever you want and then once you have it connected to this directory here then what we'll do is we'll just git add do a git commit uh the message here is going to be 
added type script folder and barrels.md. And then once that's ready, we're gonna do a git push, type in my thing, and it's off to the races. And then if we head over to my GitHub real quick, then you can see the TypeScript was just added. We'll go into barrels.md and boo what just happened that wasn't supposed to happen why is it why is it like this wait oh i didn't save i didn't save the file no one saw anything no one saw a damn thing you hear me uh okay well okay now now that we we can go back to github now and then and then ta-da everything is in here obviously you can add h2s and whatever if you want like a table of contents kind of deal going on but this is essentially the the workflow right you can kind of curate this to whatever you want but the bread and the butter the foundation of this method is being able to go through resources and take notes on it, right? I think Markdown shouldn't be optional. I feel that you should be using Markdown to take your notes because it really does force you to format your notes in a certain way. If you go into it with a mindset of this is going to be a blog post after you are done and other people are going to see it, it creates this form of accountability. Accountability in the sense that you're trying to teach other people. You're not just trying to teach yourself. And if you're going into that with, the, with that kind of mindset, it really does make you focus in on whatever topic you're learning and make sure you know what it is you're talking about. Like just imagine you're going up on stage and you didn't do the research. You didn't look up the topic that you're going to be talking about. You're going to look like an idiot. You're not going to know what it is that you should be explaining and no one's going to trust you. And so you should go into this with the same kind of mindset. And like I said, you can curate this workflow however you want. If you want to post these on a blog site like Hashnode or Dev.2, then go ahead and do that, right? Like it, I don't see that as a problem. If you want, you should probably type these posts out a little bit longer than I have in this example, but those are also options options. They can also live on your personal site if it supports Markdown, which is why I also started this video by saying it should probably be supported by Markdown. But what you do with this and all these notes that you make are completely up to you at the end of the day. So really, this method is just here to help you curate this library of knowledge for yourself or for the public and helps you retain knowledge. I think the best things that this method has done for me has been forcing me to really dig into the research and learn about for this example, barrels or whatever other concepts of a language slash framework that I need to know. And it'll also help me retain that knowledge. If I do forget at some point in my life, which 100% happens, we're all human. We can then go back to these notes and then just refer to what it is that we learned. We typed the notes. We made it easy for us individuals to understand and we're off to the races. You also have the option of also posting your resources in there, but again, you can format these notes however you want. So try this out before you call it a scam. Yes, the title may be a little clickbaity, but it really, really does help me learn pretty much anything. Let me know what y'all think about the method and try it out before you do, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.